In this video, I'll show you how you can do fake pagination. Sometimes the number of slides required to build an interaction in Adobe Captivate makes it look as if you have more slides than you actually wish to display to your learner. So the solution that I've come up with for this is to create a fake slide number that's displayed on all of your slides. In this example here, you can see that I have a project where I have created a click to reveal, but uh, you'll see, of course, that I've used multiple slides to create the effect of having a click to reveal. So from the end learner's perspective, this appears just as one slide, as opposed to, in this case, five slides to create the effect. The purpose of doing so in this example was so that I could have closed captions work for all of my click to reveals. If you want to see that video, you can click up here. So there are several things that you need to do. The first thing we need to do is we need to create our own user variable to keep track of what we want the slide number to be. So I'm going to go into my project drop down menu and select variables. And we're going to click on add new. And we're going to call this underscore because I like to start all my variables with underscore fake slide number. And I'm going to click on save and close. So I have my variable here. The next thing we need is we need an on interaction that's going to work for all of our slides to allow us to set that value. So I'm going to go into the project drop down menu and select advanced actions. Now, ultimately, I'm going to save this as a shared action, but all shared actions, of course, start off as advanced actions. So I'm going to go into the action name. I'm going to call this fake slide number. So it's easy to know which variable it was for which advanced action here. And it's a very simple advanced action to write. We're simply going to assign our fake slide number variable with the literal value of one. You can literally type anything in here. It's really ultimately just going to be a placeholder anyway. You could save this as a shared action at this point, uh, but I like to save it as a regular advanced action first in case I need to refer back to it and see how it was that I created the shared action in the first place. So we'll save that as an action, click OK, and now we'll click on Save as a Shared Action. And this is where you set up what the names of your parameters are that you as a developer can edit. So I could put a simple description in here and all we need to do, we don't need to work with the variable because that will be the same on every single slide, but we do need to change this number here. So we'll select that and I'll just call this fake slide number and people will know to put that in. So I'm going to hit save. Okay. And close. Now I have a shared action that I can apply to all my slides. But so what? That number is not really going to go anywhere. So we need to add it to this slide here. So I'm just going to create a shape, which I'm going to put roughly at the bottom here. And what we'll do is we'll make sure that that is truly centered on the slide. I can use my alignment toolbar by clicking on window and align and make sure that that's centered on the slide here. And I'm going to double click on that object. In this case, it's just a smart shape. We're going to make sure it's centered within the smart shape. I'm going to change the color to white and we'll use the insert variable button within our properties inspector to insert the fake slide number variable right there. So that's going to be there. The maximum length 50 is fine unless you're going to have more than you know, thousands of slides, which I wouldn't recommend anyway, but 50 is certainly plenty here. So there's where my fake slide number will appear on this slide. The other thing, of course, is I place this object on slide one, and it's a typical three second object here. We need this to display for the rest of the project. So we're going to go to our timing panel and we're going to change the display for option from specific time 
to rest of project. You can recognize a rest of project object because it'll have this double arrow at the end of the current slide timeline that you're inserting it on. The other thing I would recommend that you do is make sure to select place object on top. Otherwise, this object with the slide number, the fake slide number, could be covered up by other objects on later slides. So we'll always make sure it's the topmost layer. So now we're pretty much good to go here. The only thing we need to do is apply our shared action to all of these slides. So again, we're on slide number one here. We'll go to our properties inspector, go to the actions tab, and we'll execute shared action. There's our fake slide number shared action. We just need to click on the action parameters and input what slide number we want to fake in this particular case. It is actually slide one. And we'll just hit enter when we're done here and save. We can go now to slide two and do the same thing. Execute shared actions, click the parameters, and this will be slide two and hit save as well. We're going to do this for slide number three, but again, because this is part of the same interaction, this is going to also be slide number two. So therefore truly a fake slide number here. And we'll repeat this process until we have all our slide numbers input for this course. Now, if I happen to add a slide somewhere in the middle, that's okay. I just need to go in and adjust that shared action to accommodate that new slide number here. So slide number two and shared action, fake slide number two. And then now we're moving on to slide number seven, which is outside of that interaction. And so this will be fake slide number three. So I'm going to execute shared action and we'll put three in here instead. So we're creating the illusion that these seven slides are actually only three slides. So let's preview this and see how it looks. So you can see here our closed captioning's working. This is slide number one. If we move on to slide number two, the whole learning interaction is from the learner's perspective it's supposed to be on one slide. So we've simulated that by using our fake slide numbers. You can see it's maintained slide number two, even though this interaction spans across a total of five slides here. Let's click next now. And now we're on to slide number three, which as we know is actually slide number seven. So you can totally fake slide numbers. And this is one way that you can do it if you want to make sure that it's managed through a shared action like this. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.